I think without a doubt, a lot of people were really excited for this chapter. We didn't really know what was going to happen, what Marley was planning on doing, how they were going to approach the situation, and basically what they had up their sleeve. However, we did get a very, very detailed overlook on the entire situation. On one hand, a lot of us were very unsure or uneasy about Marley's approach to this situation. We thought it might have been a little bit too rushed, but at the same time, they can't really idly sit back and let Eren do his thing and gain even more power. So they took a pretty forced approach and we get to witness a pretty good strategy, a scheme, uh, a plan in motion, right? Which doesn't revolve around them killing Eren, but actually taking the founding Titan and eating Eren, taking him out of the picture completely. And in their words, stopping the circle of hatred that's been going on. Obviously, this does not go down well for them. As much as they have this really uh, strategic uh, advantage towards them, they have a lot of people on their side. They have a lot of weapons at their disposal, uh, a lot of soldiers, and the element of surprise, they are also up against Eren Jaeger. They are up against the Jaegerists. They're also up against Zeke, who appears at the end of the chapter. However, the biggest differences between the people that are fighting Eren right now, which consists of Reyna, the Jaw Titan, and I guess the Cart Titan, which has this massive military gun on the back, like a massive sniper rifle, basically. The biggest differences between them is Eren's determination. There's a lot of inner monologue and inner conflict with Reyna and Eren. They're not talking to each other, but it's more so Reyna reflecting on his own ideals while kind of putting that over onto Eren, saying that he doesn't have to suffer any more than he already has, saying that he doesn't have to make other people suffer anymore. And I think this is pretty important. It showcases a, a very, I guess, willingness to obviously defeat Eren, but at the same time, you get this very beautiful contrast of characters. Uh, the Jaw Titan even has a bit of reflection in there as well, with the guilt he feels towards killing the Warhammer Titan, or at least being forced to kill the Warhammer Titan thanks to Eren. So you have these three characters. The Jaw Titan has a pretty strong resolution of getting rid of Eren. Then you have Reyna, who has this kind of more compassionate aura to towards Eren, and an understanding for what's entirely going on, wanting to put Eren out of his misery. But then you have Eren, and his character showcase in this entire chapter is beyond, I think, what we've actually ever seen him be. The amount of determination to push forward, uh, questioning Marley's attack, and questioning even himself in that regard, but ultimately still taking that leap, is a pretty detailed showcase. It's gruesome, it's scary, but it's also fulfilling Feeling. It's a lot of burning desire there within Eren. And seeing him fight and struggle, you know, he's severely outnumbered and outpowered, but he still is pushing forward. You know, he is not giving up. Even when he gets obliterated by the cart titan with the massive rifle on her back, that severely immobilizes him. It puts him at a massive disadvantage, yet he still finds the strength to power through. This showcase of emotion, this showcase of passion and the absolute desire to keep moving forward is brilliantly detailed. Seeing Eren in this light, funny enough, doesn't make him seem like that hideous monster that he's depicted to be. Just reading this chapter, it's very hard to kind of find a side that you think is good and bad. Both ultimately want some sort of similar connection and result. Both want this circle of hatred to come to a conclusion, but there is certain ways to go about it, and there's different ways to go about it, and both Eren and then Eldia and then Marley all have their own different interpretations for it. However, the people that are making the plays, the people that are putting all this effort in and sacrifice, most importantly, are the people with power, which is Eren, which is the Jaegerist, which is Eldia, which is Marley, which is Reyna, which is the Jaw Titan, the Cart Titan, which is Zeke. There's so many people are putting forth so much power and determination to ultimately hit a similar goal, and I love the fact that this chapter kind of blurs that line completely. Who is right, who is wrong. It's hard to hate Eren when you see so much desire and willpower to keep moving forward for what he wants and for what he wants potentially for Eldia and the future. But then you feel compassionate towards Reyna because of him showing compassion to Eren and understanding him completely. He even boils Eren down to them sharing the exact same fate in dying in a couple of years because of the aging curse, so it brings them both down on a relatable level. It's very human. I think it was incredibly well done within this chapter. A lot of emotion going around, and Isayama done a phenomenal job in depicting all of these characters in a very individual but beautiful light. 
they held their own ground. We also do get to see a pretty good showcase of Eren's abilities, which was a very big question for a lot of people, because now that he has the Warhammer Titan alongside the Founding Titan, alongside obviously the Attack Titan, what could he specifically use? Could he use the Warhammer Titan? Would he have to transform into that? Like how would this ultimately work? We see a little bit of it. Obviously Eren's at a massive disadvantage and switching between the Attack Titan and the Warhammer Titan abilities is obviously going to take up a lot of energy, you know, a lot of strength, a lot of power. So each time he ultimately uses the Warhammer Titan, his usage becomes less and less. There's also kind of an implication in place because he does get kind of obliterated through the skull. His brain ultimately gets destroyed within the Titan and that severely slows him down. If anything, that situation on its own and Eren pushing forward through that reflects how impressive Eren handled the situation. How much energy and willpower he put in to keep moving forward uh, after being pretty much immobilized to a certain extent or at least to a massive portion. I think this was a really good fight on all behalves. We get a good showcase of Eren's abilities, we get a good hand-to-hand -hand combat with Raynor and uh, Eren and then we also get the Jaw Titan jumping around doing his thing and the way Isayama kind of depicted the whole fight, this Raynor and Eren fight has been going on for so long now. There has been so many rematches and fights between them, like is this the conclusion for it? Are we in Endgame now? Who will ultimately live and survive from this situation? and who will die is kind of the big question at this point. I think without a doubt Reyna is going to meet his conclusion sooner or later, whether it's by the hands of Zeke or whether it's by the hands of Eren. I think it'd be more responsible and more emotional if it was by the hands of Eren. I'm not too sure about the Jaw Titan. I would like to see him kind of get obliterated as well. I don't think he plays a vital piece to the puzzle, so taking him out of the picture now I think would be a pretty appropriate situation. The Kant Titan is always going to be that meticulous character that always kind of escapes, but I do think Zeke will actually handle her. I think their kind of reunion to an extent, or at least the history that they've both had together, would come to a conclusion pretty well if they kind of faced off with each other to that extent. And considering she's a primary powerhouse right now because of the rifle on her back, without a doubt the only person that can realistically go for her is Zeke. So Zeke will have to kind of juggle dealing with the Car Titan alongside helping Eren to a certain extent. Even just seeing Zeke come into the chapter right at the end with all of this desire and willpower and just passion is is incredible. It's it's really hard to, to see Zeke in a really bad light or even Eren or any other character like I was saying. So uh, once again, Isayama done a phenomenal job in reintroducing Zeke into the story, into the primary spotlight as he's like the main focus, the main ending point for this chapter. And now the balance for this situation has ultimately turned. I think the bigger question is, is that we have these Jaegerists, we have these soldiers, we have these blimps up in the sky, we have this battleground that is, you know, littered with soldiers and power and enemy. Who else comes into the picture, right? For the most part, Mali has everything riding on this situation. To kind of give you more perspective for that, if everything goes wrong for them here, but they somehow manage to escape and live, they don't really have much of a chance to take out Eren after that. Right now, it's not entirely unbalanced, but it still is a very iffy situation. You could say that Marley has a lot more power because they have a lot more distance and mobility to that extent, and Eren has already taken a lot of damage, but at the same time, Zeke has entered the fray, and he's a, a pretty big mystery on that regard, but if he gets in contact with Eren, the, you know, the founding titan then ultimately comes into play, and we could be leading up to that point as well, which I think would be a pretty good conclusion to this little war bit right now, to this massive fight, with Eren ultimately activating the founding titan, maybe even the wall titans, which I think would be pretty cool, but at the moment we're entering this pinnacle phase of fighting. The next couple of chapters will really showcase who's going to live, who's going to die, and if any other characters are going to come into the mix, such as, you know, the colossal titan, Armin, or or maybe even Levi makes his return somehow, even though he's gravely injured. Even Mikasa at this point. Yelena had a lot of spotlight as well, so it'd be interesting to see what happens with that and how that kind of explores from there. Just the whole idea in this chapter, I think, was beautifully executed, and I am very excited to see kind of what goes forward from here. So with that being said, that is basically it. Let me know how you guys felt about the chapter. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Are you excited to see how this all comes to a conclusion? Because we're basically in Endgame now. But I'm actually going to end the video off here. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.